The most effective tunes tend to be tracks that don't house a lot of information. I mean, there's a difference between art and a cool production. If it's art, it's just musicianship, it could be avant-gardistic or it can be no problem. Nobody could debate what the outcome is. When you're trying to make tracks and you want a large amount of people to really enjoy your track, the easy route is to keep things simple. Now that's easier said than done most of the time. Now, one trick to use is to use an arpeggio. I'm gonna get into it. So this is why you should always use a bass arpeggio. That's today's video. You ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Yo, what's up? I'm in a location to thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, all that good stuff. I'll tell you all about making some music with me in the studio. That's what it is. Cool stuff. Cool beans. Now, an arpeggio is a group of notes played one after the other, up and down in pitch. The player plays the notes of a particular chord individually rather than together. That is what Google tells you about arpeggios. Now, why are they such a strong tool to use in your music? I love to use them, but I love to use them especially on bass because the higher notes and the lower notes do a completely different thing. Bass in particular, obviously, hence the name, it resides on the lower end of the frequency spectrum, which means the energy does something for your groove. Now, bass notes tend to be round, they tend to be full, they tend to be rich, and this is what you would need in order to get your groove going. You can stick all different kinds of vibes in there, but I tend to just like try and be a little bit of a, music, a magician when it comes to my low end frequency. So what I've done today is I've got this groove, which is, a little bit out of my comfort zone, mind you, because there's no open hat, there's no overly uh, produced craziness. It's just a long tunnel of crazy sounds. And I've embedded a few low end frequency content notes within the drums already. And now I'm going to lay a few arpeggios over each other and they need to just interact with each other. That's and, and I do think that that really seems to work the best on the dance floor. Every time when I try that stuff out, it works. People go like, oh my God, I lost myself in the music if that's what you would want. Now, an arpeggio works on different kinds of vibes, but with the bass, especially bass synthesizers that can do a wide range, Mini Tower only plays three chords, so perhaps an arpeggio might not be uh, the best for that specific machine. When it comes to maybe the subsequent, now, there's a machine that can hold its own. Rich in the bottom end, crazy on the top end, but still that creamy, moggy kind of vibe, right? And there's a new culprit in the room. There's the Dirty Wave Mate that I have connected to the Akai MPC Live, and it's getting a pulse signal. It's playing along, and there's an arpeggio coming from there as well. So I'm not gonna get in depth into that machine, but I had it, and it's nice to show it off, so here it goes. Okay, um, without further ado, let's head out, and let's see if we can make this stuff work. You ready? Let's go! Let's get into some ARPs, shall we? Okay, now, the setup, uh, as you can see, has exploded vastly once more, but um, that's only just to make um, uh, a point. Today, there's a DM12 Midas mixer sitting over here, crackling uh, consistently, I have to say. Not very much now, but it does crackle here and there. There's a kick drum. There's a bass line here, which is the mini tower, uh, sitting here on a cable, that cable which um, is a diode clipper cable. So there's a bit of a, a diode clipping thing going on. Um, I can show you this. The cable looks like this. There's a, um, a diode inside of this little uh, red nipple, first, which is, goes in here. So one end uh, inputs the other output and then uh, if I um, open the the, the 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 volume fader on the on the mini tower, uh, it'll go into some sort of a bit of a how shall I put it? Uh, yeah, um, distortion of some kind, but mildly though. It only does it in certain re uh, uh, regiments, 
which is cool. Subsequent 37, black box. There's an M8 tracker right here. Hmm. Then there's the Akai MPC Live, the Acid Box 3, a MIDI fighter is over here, Mi Log XD, there's digital delay, there's um, blue sky, well, black sky panel sitting right here. I don't know if it's on screen, but it's sitting right here. Take my word for it. Um, now, um, this originates, as I said before, on making a track with as little information as you can because mostly one or two or three elements that really stick out does the trick now i'm going to start off with something now let's see where i am in the measure i'm over here so this is my launch pad with sounds that are coming from the black box right so every knob resembles one of those little squares here i don't have everything lined up there's a crash right here you can hear so every so often i can say like okay let's get it kick this is only to set you off dancing get you into some sort of a vibe and the trick is to find some sort of an arpeggio kind of vibe that will work right so there's an arpeggio sitting right here you can hear this thing will get my rave thingy going again and then the scores and stuff so I can do different things with my sample launcher now when I get into the groove of the beats let's turn this off I will go into my uh, track mute page and I've got my stuff lined up already my drums right I want to keep it very simple that's how I go about this it doesn't need to be complicated so so I've got hats sitting here and the hats are in delay, so I'm not going to go for that classic open hat. I want to vibe out this track because I'm going to use an arpeggio to make the arpeggio really, really stand out and work. Let's lower this a bit because I think I'm over driving it a little bit. The kick might be a little bit too loud. I will turn it down in a second. So my kick is coming from this uh, A1 thing. Now, in order to get a bit of a groove going immediately, I've got this. to go into the kick drum and say like down a little bit yep something like that you know if it lights up a little bit it's okay if it starts to just like illuminate indefinitely you're probably squeezing uh, the life out of this Midas mixer that mind you this has a bit of a one day flight kind of character because it doesn't really yeah you know it starts to crackle a lot for in the studio work amazing take it on the road a couple of times and you will start to see a little bit of tear and wear a little bit sooner as i expected which is totally cool no problem now i'm going to make a arpeggio on this subsequent because i do think that that's the bad boy in the room here um but i've got an original arpeggio already playing from this little new addition that we've got to the last set right now this is the May Tracker. Now, I'm, I'm by no means an expert on this thing, and mine seems to be uh, having some issues that it restarts. Uh, so, I'm going to reach out to the guys and see what we can do. Other than that, this is an amazing machine, amazing machine. Now, what have I got? Um, I'm, let's go out and see where we are. So, I have to shift out. So, I've only got one pattern playing. So, I didn't make a complete song on it because I'm only using an element of it. So, I'm using that synthesizer uh, that, that's on there. Um, and what it plays uh, is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and as you can hear, there's an LFO on there as well. Plays a bit of an LFO. And the fun part is when I go to this um, page, I will go here and I'll see that there's my filter page, there's timbre, color, there's degrade, there's the, the redux, and then the filter is there, I'm already on the filter now, if I hold um, the edit uh, button and I touch the screen, let's see what happens. That's absolutely amazing, so for performance purposes, this is already cool. Go here, go down, so I've got my chorus, delay and reverb, now I'm on the reverb, listen to this. So that's cool. So that's already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, going to go back to not the resonance, but uh, back to the cutoff, and I'll turn it down a little bit more. 
so that it sits in the background right now back to my drums so i'm thinking okay i want to build up the drums a little bit more um there is a loop of some sorts because i space it out like i've got like drum computerish kind of programs that i use like this is something that i played myself then there's a hat as well so let's go back to the track mute as you can hear one two three four everything on the beat with the hats cool so the whole thing is to invoke a bit of hypnotism right that's what you want to do because you don't want to make it too complicated now when i was playing around with the tracker there's a track that i made on this which absolutely amazing uh workflow the way it works completely different from anything else if you work with uh, with a door this is just it does something else i'll show you that in future videos but it does the trick now listen i've got something else let's do this loop now, now we're here i'm liking this right so i'm going to turn the mate down slightly okay this is already cool i've got now everything that i need out of this um, vibe, this groove. This thing is a set it, forget it kind of vibe for now. Um, I'm triggering this from the Akai, by the way, since the Akai's got two MIDI outs, as you know. So one is feeding the mate and the other one's feeding the black box. So when I stop this and start this, those two are going to stop, which is not what I'm going to do today because I've done it and the mate just doesn't seem to like it too much. So that's something I need to figure out myself. Okay, then when we get to the arpeggio, I'm gonna go in and say like, this is all nice and ostinato going in a certain direction. Let's turn down the mate for a second. Filter it down maybe even more. That's also an LFO that I got on there. So you can hear the filter going up and down, now it's gone. And then it comes again, so I want this sound to be alive. If I'm using static elements, I want those elements to move by themselves. I don't want to be standing there like Poindexter, moving my finger all the time, not for sake of just getting RSI, just if that thing can do it for me, that'll be cool, right? Okay, now what we're going to do, what I've done also is already, I have got the note repeat already engaged because if I'm gonna go to the uh, subsequent, which is close here, Well, it's not engaged, yeah, it's engaged, let's engage it. There you go. That's the sound that I wanted, right? And then, if I'm holding it, nothing happens. Now, an arpeggio, obviously, are notes that play after the other, so. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a chord that corresponds with the music that I'm doing, and let this thing Okay, well, I think I'm liking it. So I'm trying to get my bearings here. What am I going to play? I'm going to wait for the measure to turn around. I've got a 16 bar uh, sequence. It's 14, 15, 16. Let's go in and do. Do a better job with that, there, right? But now that I know that I've got my 16 bars, I can only play it once, two, three, four. There you go, nice. Now, I'm liking this, right? Now, the reason that this works for me is because now, I mean, the notes are all over the place. Let's save this, by the way. Save it first. There you go. Whoop. I'm gonna play around with the filters because that is where the magic is. I'm going to give it a little bit of reverb. Now 
let's see if we can take that high note out of there, right? Because I think it's a lot of... This is what I like. This is why I think arpeggios are the best on bass. Because, as you can hear, that bottom note... Boom, 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 boom. There was a lot of envelope generation on there, so I took it out. Nothing's wrong, just because this is gone. Now the filter's all, all, all the way down. You can even hear it on the reverb that the low note is, is acting as a drum. And that's what you, this is what you like to have on your beat. Listen to the kick. Okay, open it up. Longer notes, maybe. Turn down the reverb a little bit. Ooh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Okay. And the rest of the drums. arpeggios are starting to just like gel together so what I would want is my track to be very organic I don't want to use a lot of information that's two different things either you play themes with sounds and stabs that's very open it does the trick but it's also very sort of like overgroundish maybe and what I would like from my music when I need to just like play it out in a way that it uh, hypnotizes you a little bit more it gives you that sense of where are where am I where is it going I'd probably just like play something like this. Now still, I think the notes are very audible. So let's see if we can mask it a little bit more. I think it's to do with the envelope generation a bit. And let's trick the two synthesizers to work together. So this Mutable Instruments uh, uh, macro synth that is loaded on the mate. I'm gonna open the filter up a little bit. let the subsequence shine through. Now what's happening with the LFO here is it's going to open up, so it's going to cross this sound, and then it's going to die out, and then you hear the higher notes playing. Now this LFO didn't really sync up, it's just freely running, so every time it hits the uh, subsequent in a different spot, so you hear different things of the subsequent, if you keep it stationary in this position, right? Cool. I'm liking that, cool. Now there's a bit of melody that I played here, obviously. Let's see if we can accompany um, this with a bass line underneath. Maybe with the mini or something playing here. Something is playing, so we're gonna need to take that out. Okay, we're gonna take that out, shift, cut it. And I'm going to take also that loop off and open this up. Yeah, let's try that, why not? Cool, go back in. Okay, do some sound design here. Nice. Now as you hear, let's go back into my drums. 
this is how it starts. So I'm trying to layer stuff so that the arpeggio is coming in later. I got to sit on top of it. So everything feels like this one organic bass line, which clearly it's not. Everything's built out of different elements. So in my ABC structure, building a house, first I'm going to lay down the foundation. Now all the high frequencies, let me take them out, right? So what have we got now? We've got the kick drum, the bass line, which clearly is, yeah, you can hear the um, the diode working a bit. Here you can clearly hear. Forgive me, this knob is still not fixed. So here, hear how the sound is nice and round. I listen to what happens if I'm opening up the volume and driving the diode more. That, so here nothing happens. And here it starts to growl at you a little bit, which is exactly what you need. Now the envelope generation amount, turn it down a bit. Play and play that tom underneath, listen. Yeah, maybe. Mind you, a big thing also is that my kick drum is also tuned in the same key as the rest of the music. I don't even know what key it is in, but um, I know as much as to not stray from uh, the key because it, it could work, um, but at the same time, it, you'll hear that it makes a big impact if your kick drum is going to be in a completely different key. Let's go in and say, let's add it to sample, for instance, kick. So you'll start to uh, mess around with it, which is not what I'm supposed to do. So hey, kick, let's go back out. Uh, kick, and it's samples, yeah. Tune, that's what. You hear what happens? Off. Do, 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 do. And we need half a uh, note down. Like I still hear think uh, I can hear people in the um, comment section going, uh oh, he's going to say it. Is he going to say it? Yes. Well, let's do it. Ah, you never guess how many semitones I pitched this up. Okay, so you can hear that this clearly is the key. Yeah, let's open up the um, subsequent here and see if we're on the right path. We got a nice melody going, right? I'll level everything out. This is the only wild card in the whole situation. A wild card in a good way, I mean this, because this is where I built my adrenaline, right? So I can build it up. Go back to my um, um, track mute page. I don't use the track mute page because I've already split everything out. The kick is going uh, into channel one. And then on the stereo channel is the rest of the stereo output. So I'm, I've already done it. So I can easily uh, get my drums in and out, right? But for sake of this thing, go in with the loop. I'm using it in a specific frequency range because I know for a fact if I'm using this on, in, on a club sound system, it's going to really, really push the sound forward. Now, um, if you can still make up what I have, kick out, hats in. we start to work the frequency window a little bit more because the high notes are a bit aggressive and I think the black sky is also uh, emphasizing all these higher elements 
within the frequency range, within the higher segment of the filter, which is cool. But so we're trying to build a foundation, right? That's what we're that's what we're doing. We're trying to just like build this basic kind of groove on which we can give ourselves ample time to work on our next move, right? Okay, kick out, mate in. Nice. Surprise, right symbol. Taking this out, going in, filtering it in. Nice one, woo! Okay, so what would be the next move? The next move obviously would be um, playing some strings maybe with the uh, um, Mini Log XD sitting over here, which is uh, just for cosmetics today. Um, and uh, you can just like say like, okay, let's change up the sound, let's go somewhere else. So, I'm gonna take this out. And then I'm back with my mate. Playing around with the filter here, switching to different sound. See? So now I can just like easily transition. Take the bass line out. There you go. You're going to transition into a different track. Easy peasy. Well, that's my philosophy on on how to use certain elements um, and this is a change for me I have to be honest because coming from an orchestra background maybe for me it's basically um, usually I use everything as an orchestra so this plays that and that accompanies that and then you know you like build it up harmony wise when you're performing different elements do different things and all of a sudden new rules apply and, and to me this is cool because um, as you can hear playing this It's not in the same key, well, but they're neighboring keys, so I can get away with it. So you can switch out of this, boom, boom, doo, 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 out of it. And that's because most of the notes that are playing on this sound out of the black box, they're also embedded on this arpeggio that's been playing out of the mate so I try to just make sure that if I'm going to transition into a new segment of my performance I will make sure that the, those notes are already playing I don't know why if I'm hitting this note two cells are playing but you know what we don't care one two three wait that crash Woo nice one some loops in there as well and then you just build it up now once I've got the elements going that I want you know certain things I program ahead of time like um, I don't want to be fiddling around with the mate live as of yet trying to program it because I'm not that fast with it yet it's literally me just sitting uh, on the couch watching telly or whatever and you know just playing around with it um, but other things that I'm more comfortable with like for instance with the mini tower bass line like that or uh, maybe with the subsequent here those are things that I can do live um, space it out on different um, sequences and have the presets loaded and have notes being played in one uh, instance and in another instance they're not being played so if I switch my sequence page which you can see here I've not done anything here so you can see there's only a few things that have been loaded usually this thing will be filled up to the brim which means I can just like go everywhere and the last two are literally me uh, being able to play certain notes which is cool and I'm going to figure out on how to just like get this uh, thing going for me because uh, I have a track already loaded um, now I've just got two things you know there's even a snare drum let's see if we can add that in quick fast boom, boom. yeah there you go that's the end of this of the mate and then we stop it see this is what I mean 
So that's something that I need to sort out. It stops and I don't know why that happens. There's something, I've been on the forum asking the guys about it, but it's something we're going to sort out. In the end of the day, wicked machine. I've already uh, done a lot of stuff with it. Now, this basically is uh, my arpeggio kind of vibe. Um, yeah, check it out. Leave a comment in the section below on how you use your arpeggios or whether you use them the same way or whether you don't use arpeggios at all. I like to hear from you and uh, the other guys get to tell you all about Patreon and Discord. All right? Johan Boyzat is my new patron and he follows all the action on patreon.com slash Analog Kitchen. That's where magic happens. And the magic being a community that I've got bridged to Discord. And that's absolutely an amazing thing. And why is it so amazing? Because um, when I started out this YouTube channel, it was more about me uh, just giving out the information that I thought that people might find useful. But it just grown into a large, large community of synth-loving nerds as myself talking about a lot of stuff uh, in our synthesizer niche of the web. So you're more than welcome to come and join. You will not be breaking the bank. It will be cool. And uh, Jan, welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, make sure you just head over to Discord as well where the magic is happening. There's challenges. You can throw your demos in there. People will help you out. People will sort you out with the sound, with the travel, with the gas, with everything. So there's so many things that are happening. And we're actually also going to just do a dance carousel now where I have said it last week. That's, I think we're going to start in a few weeks. Weeks, what are we going to do? One producer starts with a eight bar uh, with a groove and he has to stick a bass line and a lead of some sort over the top. You pass on the drums to somebody else, somebody does their lead and their bass on top of your beat and then produces another beat and then it goes on and goes on. And then we get this nice little tandem of a carousel going. So we're going to see how we're going to work that out. We're talking about how we get the metabolize that, so that's going to be the new upcoming uh, it's not so much a challenge, more of a collaboration. Let's see what we can do. You know, so it doesn't matter what your skill level is, people are uh, here to help you out. Uh, we're doing this through Patreon, so it's going to be on Discord, and my Discord is available through Patreon, so then you know. Now, thank you for watching if you made it this far into the video. Um, music you can find on Bandcamp, like for instance, remix that I did for uh, Radiohead, which is an unofficial Unreal Kitchen sort of like uh, rework. Uh, if you want to find that, um, you can find it there if you, if you like it. Um, yeah, next week is going to be another video. Let me know what you think. Um, I don't know. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you for watching. Superstar, I'll catch you next week. Keep watching this space. Hello Kitchen, out. Peace.